All right, so Node.js is pretty efficient when it comes to handling data intensive input output calls, but a CPU intensive task would potentially block the single threaded instance, affecting the response time for other requests. These tasks could be anything from mathematical calculations, image or video processing, to parsing huge JSON files. The multi-threaded applications would have a clear advantage in such scenarios because while one thread is busy handling a heavy computational task, the others could simply proceed with the rest of the requests. We have looked at child processes and the cluster module in our previous videos. The creation of a new process instance is expensive when it comes to time and memory because every time you fork a child process, the CPU needs to allocate resources to this new process. An alternative to this would be worker threads. The core idea behind the implementation is still the same, which is to execute JavaScript in parallel. Worker threads or simply workers are part of the same process. Each of these threads will have their own JavaScript engine instance, their own node instance and their own event loop so that they can work independently without bothering the rest of the threads. Since they are part of the same process, they get to share the same memory which is why it makes this more efficient than child processes. Now this is not something that is part of JavaScript the language. It's an implementation in Node.js that makes use of JavaScript workers. Alright, so let's see how this works in code. Alright, so I have the same express application that we looked at since the beginning of this series. We have a light endpoint and a heavy endpoint. When you make a request to the heavy endpoint, it's going to block the event loop which in turn is going to block any subsequent requests. So if I run this now and try to make both the requests simultaneously. So I'm making the heavy request first and then the light request. You'll see that the light request is loading. It's not resolving right away because it has to wait for the heavy request first and only then will it be able to execute. So this means that the heavy request is blocking the event loop. Now let's see how worker threads can solve this problem. So we'll need to first import the worker class itself from the worker threads module, which is going to create new workers. So now inside the heavy endpoint, we'll create the worker instance right away. We get to add a couple of things inside this new worker instantiation. So the first one is going to be a URL to a file. Now this file is going to be our worker file. Inside this worker file, we'll keep our complex calculations. So this whole block, this, this uh, while loop is going to be moved inside that worker file. So any heavy computational task that you need to offload to a worker thread is going to be stored inside that file. That is going to be the first argument. The second argument is going to be an options object. We'll take a look at that later. But for now, let's just focus on creating a simple worker. Let me first add a worker file here. So and name it worker.js and I'll create it over here. Now inside this worker file, we'll have the same calculation as I mentioned earlier. So I'll be just moving the while loop from this heavy endpoint to the worker file. I don't need it here. So now anytime I make a request to this heavy endpoint, we are creating a new worker and this worker is going to do the calculation separately for us. Now, once the calculation is done, the worker thread needs to send the response back to the main thread. We need the parent threads instance for that, which we can get from the worker threads module. So, so I'll just import that. The parent instance has a method called post message. In fact, every thread, every worker that you see is going to have a method called post message. So it's one way that a thread could communicate or send messages to other threads. Pair input dot post message. And I'll just copy this message from here and put it inside here. Now that we are sending this message to the main thread, We'll need a way to figure out when the message was received from the worker thread inside this main thread. So the worker instance that we created is again an instance of the event emitter object in Node.js. So we can listen for various kinds of events. The event that we are going to listen to is going to be message event. And the message that we get, we are simply going to send it as a response. 
So now again, what is happening is whenever I make a request to the heavy endpoint, it's creating a worker. The worker code is hosted inside this file. We make the heavy calculation and we return the response once the calculation is done using the post message method to the parent port. We have a listener over here. So once the message is received, we basically send the message back to the client. Now let me just save both of these files and try to run this again. Now I'll make the request first to the heavy endpoint and then the light endpoint. So I run this. Now if I try to do this, it runs right away. It's not blocking anymore. The heavy request is still running, but I'm able to run light request multiple times. So our thread blocking problem is now resolved. Now let's take a look at the options object that I had mentioned earlier. We can pass in a bunch of options inside this as you can see over here. So every process is going to have an ARGV object, which is basically a bunch of arguments that the process can use. ARGV lets you append custom arguments to that ARGV object for that particular process. ENV will let you add environment variables specific to a thread environment. These variables are cloned, so the parent and the worker thread will have separate copies of these variables. So if I just pass in, let's say, an object, and I have two variables, variable one, value one, variable two, value two. Now these values, these environment variables that I have created over here, can be used inside this worker instance. So if I just, let's say console log process.env.variable1 and save this. Now whenever I make a heavy request, you'll see that in the console I get the value one variable. We can also set resource limits for our worker so that once a worker reaches a particular limit, it will automatically terminate. We also have the typical standard stream flags here. This transfer list option that you see over here is an interesting concept that we will see in the later part of this video. Then we have the worker data option. Anything that you pass inside this will be cloned and passed to the worker. You can then access it inside the worker using worker data which is available inside worker threads module. So let me just pass in some random values to this worker data property. Now inside the worker file, I can just simply import the worker data option and I'll remove this for now and console log the worker data as it is. Now if I make a request to the heavy endpoint and see the console, you'll find the worker data here. So this is how you can pass data to your worker while creating the worker instance itself. Now there's one more way of implementing or creating worker threads. Instead of having a separate file for our worker code, we can use the same file to separate our main and worker thread functionalities. There's a property called is main thread, which tells you whether the code is running inside a worker thread or a parent thread. This is similar to the is primary property that we saw in the cluster module. If it's the main thread that's running the code, we'll set up our express server and our endpoints. But when we make the heavy request, we spawn a new thread and offload the heavy operation. It only makes sense to offload these CPU intensive operations to the worker because IO operations like these API calls are already handled optimally by, by the default async node APIs. Alright, so let me just make a few changes here. The first, we will check whether this is the main thread or not. So I can import the is main thread property from the worker threads module. Inside this, I'll be creating the express instance. Right, so I have the is main thread property. I'm checking whether the code that is running is inside this main thread. And if it is, then I'm creating the express instance and I'm creating both these endpoints. Now, when I make a request to the heavy endpoint, I need to create the worker, which I'm doing right now over here. But this time, I'm not going to create a separate file for my worker. I'm going to handle it inside this file itself. So now instead of using this file, I'm going to use the same file that we are in right now. So I'm going to use the file name property here. It's going to rerun this file itself inside a worker thread. 
So now when we create this worker instance, this file is going to be reloaded. And this time it's not going to be inside the main thread, it's going to be inside a worker thread. So this block is not going to be executed. Now we need the else block here and the code inside this else block is going to be executed. And this else block is obviously going to do the heavy computational task which we have inside our worker. I'll just copy this and put it inside the else block. Actually, I'll copy this as well. And I'll save this. Now if I run this. Oh, actually I need this inside here. And I'll save this again. Now if I make the heavy request. And then the light request you'll see that the light request responds right away there's no blocking here so our code is still working so this implementation here is still working before actually moving forward make sure you import the worker data and the parent port from the worker threads module because we are using both of these options inside this else block now personally i'm not a fan of this method I like to keep things separately and I definitely don't want to clog up my main server file. So we'll stick to the previous approach. Now, now the worker instance has a few other events that can listen to. So there's an error event which is emitted if the worker thread throws an uncaught exception. We have an exit event which is emitted once the worker has stopped. The online event is emitted when the worker thread has started executing JavaScript code. So nothing fancy here. It's typically what you get to see whenever you're working with event emitters. Now I'll stop right here because the next part that we are going to look at is thread communication. Now thread communication is not that straightforward and you'll be seeing that in the next video. So yeah, make sure you do subscribe for that. And if you have any doubts or suggestions, you can put them in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.